اعوذبلّہمنشیتانجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ لیکچر نائن ایز یو نو آئی ہیو بین گوئنگ تھرو دا پرومس مسایہ علیہ السلامز ایکسپشنل بک حقیقت الوحی وچ یونیکلی ایکسپلینز the philosophy of divine revelations. I have already explained the philosophy part as the Promised Messiah al-Islam has put before us. Then the Promised Messiah al-Islam has continued the book to cover the signs and revelations received as prophecies by him as a mark of his truthfulness in his claim to be the Messiah and the Mahdi of the latter days. The promised Messiah al-Islam has included 208 such signs in this book. Although the intention had been to have 300 signs for those that came after him, so that he may be accepted as the Messiah and the Muhammadi Ummati Prophet. In the last two lectures, I covered the first 100 signs recorded by the Promised Messiah al-Islam in this book. In this lecture, I intend to continue covering more recorded signs, especially the most outstanding ones noted in the book. and any additional matters. I shall use the same sign and numbers as given in the book for your easy reference. Now I continue the signs beyond number 100. Sign number 101. In 1904, whilst travelling to Jehilam regarding Karam Deen's filed criminal case, the promised Messiah al-Islam received a revelation meaning, I shall show you my blessings in every aspect. The Jamaat was informed of this revelation and it was published in Al-Hakam. Next, I move on to sign number 104. The Promised Messiah, al-Islam's son, Mubarak Ahmad, fell ill with fainting spells. The Promised Messiah, al-Islam, was busy praying for him when one lady said to stop since the child was already dead. The Promised Messiah al-Islam went close to the child, placing his hand on the body. And after a few minutes, the boy began to breathe and his pulse was beating and the boy returned to life. This was like the exaggerated raising of the dead by Hazrat Isa al-Islam and as misunderstood by the ignorant. Going on to sign number 105. The Promised Messiah al-Islam was once shown in a dream that only a few days of the life of his brother Mirza Ghulam Qadir were left, 15 days at the most. After this, He suddenly became ill and reduced to almost a skeleton and became totally incontinent and unconscious most of the time. His father, a physician, said his condition was beyond a cure. The Promised Messiah Islam embarked upon prayers for him and his condition began to change for the better. The Promised Messiah al-Islam saw him walking in another dream. 
prayers continued for 15 days with a slow recovery taking place and he was restored to full health in a few days. After that, he lived for 15 years. So God had changed the 15 days of his life into 15 years as God can change his prophecies. Moving on to sign number 107. The promised Messiah had announced to the world several times that major earthquakes shall strike the world. Everyone knew of the San Francisco and Formosa, now called Taiwan, ones, and one in Chile, leaving millions homeless. Some people thought the prophecies were only for the Punjab or India. But, the Promised Messiah wrote, and I quote, But do they not know that God is the God of the entire world? not merely of the Punjab or India. The warnings, said the Promised Messiah were for the whole world and would occur in parts of Asia, some being like doomsday. There shall be death on a large scale, not only by earthquakes, but other calamities so the doomsday spectacle will be shown. In this sign, the promised Messiah gave warnings to the world with the following words. On page 327 of the English version, the promised Messiah wrote, Not only earthquakes, but other terrible calamities will also appear, some from heaven and some from earth. This will occur because mankind has abandoned the worship of their God and have fallen upon materialism with all their hearts, all their resolve and all their thoughts. Had I not come, these calamities might have been delayed a little, but with my coming, the hidden designs of God's wrath that had remained hidden for a long time have been manifested. On page 328, he writes, O Europe, <coughs> O Europe, you are not safe, and O Asia, neither are you secure. And O oh, dwellers of islands, no artificial god will come to your aid. I see cities falling and habitations in ruins. On page 328, I say it truly that this country's turn is also drawing near. Continuing on page 328, the age of Nu, that is Noah, shall appear before your eyes, and you will witness with your own eyes the incident of the land of Lut, i.e. Lot. But God is slow to wrath. Repent so that you are shown mercy. End of quote. Now I move on to sign number 109. <clears throat> Another prophecy published in Brahina Ahmadiyya had been as follows. I quote, Thus did we favour this Yusuf with our signs, so that we may save him from the vices and faults which will be ascribed to him. We shall do this 
to enable you to warn the negligent through the grandeur of those signs. For the truth is that people are only moved by the words of those whom God himself invests with eminence and distinction. End of quote. <clears throat> Here God called the promised Messiah Yusuf, i.e. Joseph, as a prophet. The same will happen here because his brethren in faith will hatch plots to try and kill and destroy this Yusuf, but will ultimately fail. It will become evident to many that they were in the wrong, and they will address him thus, By God, God has chosen you out of all of us, and we were in error. God will forgive those who repent, as he is the most merciful. In the end, the opponents will remain frustrated and unsuccessful, and God will adorn the promised Messiah Islam, with the crown of honour and bestow on him majesty and grandeur beyond anyone's expectations. The promised Messiah Islam, said, most of this prophecy had been fulfilled, even against opponents worse than Yusuf al-Islam's brothers. God humiliated them by subordinating hundreds of thousands to the promised Messiah and bestowing special glory and honour on him. Moving on to sign 111. Brahina Ahmadiyya contained the following revelation prophecy, and I quote, I shall demonstrate my light and shall raise you with a demonstration of my power. A warner came into the world, but the world accepted him not. Yet God shall accept him and demonstrate his truthfulness with mighty assaults. End of quote. At least 25 years had passed since that prophecy was given when the promised Messiah was wholly unknown. Prophecy says, despite bitter opposition and little prospects for success, but God, with his lustrous signs, would draw the world towards this movement and display mighty assaults to assess, to attest to the promised Messiah Islam's truth. These included the plague and earthquakes, shaking the world, and there could be other sorts to follow. So it is clear that God established the Jamaat through the manifestation of His powers with opponents remaining help, helpless in opposition to him. Now I move on to sign number 113. A prophecy in Brahina Ahmadiyya means, and I quote, two goats will be slaughtered and everyone on earth shall die in the end. End of quote. This was published 25 years before this book. When Molvi Sahibzada Abdul Latif and his disciple, Sheikh Abdul Rahman, were murdered by the tyranny of the Amir of Kabul, its meaning became clear as the word goat in scriptures is used for righteous persons. 
Since they were the only martyrs in the Jamaat at the time, it was clear that they were intended by the revelation. The revelation was also accompanied by the phrase, Slacken not and be not grieved. When Mulvi Abdul Latif was in Qadian, the Promised Messiah Islam had also received a revelation that he would be murdered in a dreadful way which confirmed that prophecy. Now I move on to sign number 116. One morning, the words Abdullah Khan, Dera Ismail Khan were on the lips of the Promised Messiah Islam, and he understood that someone of that name would send some money. He told this to a Brahma Hindu who did not believe in continuation of revelation after the Vedas. He said he would test matters by going to the post office before postal delivery. He was wonderstruck to find that one Abdullah Khan, who was an extra assistant, at Dera Smail Khan had sent some money. The Hindu was deeply amazed and repeatedly asked who had told of this. When informed that it was God Almighty whom we worship and knows hidden secrets, the Promised Messiah Islam had also amazed Lala Sharampat and his brother Bishambar Das and also Khushul by prophecies regarding them too. The Promised Messiah Islam thanked God that not only Muslims but all nations of the world could witness his signs. May Allah be praised. Now I move on to sign number 119. This is a rather longer sign to relate, but I will do it. In the year 1900, one of the Promised Messiah al-Islam's paternal cousins, Imam Uddin, who was severely opposed to him, built a wall across the front of the Promised Messiah Islam's house, but on his own land, making going and returning from the mosque difficult, effectively besieging them. The Promised Messiah Islam had to file a complaint in the court of the district judge. Analysis showed that the case was not winnable, so that compromise should be made instead by offering him some money. But this was not likely either, as Imam Uddin harboured a personal grudge against the Promised Messiah Islam and the Islamic faith itself. He knew the advantage he enjoyed, as there was an old decree for possession of his land. He also planned that once the case was dismissed, to build a larger wall in front of the Promised Messiah Islam's house, effectively besieging the occupants like prisoners. This was an unexpected calamity, and prayers were sought. The Promised Messiah Islam received a long revelation, noted piecemeal, by Sayyid Fazal Shah, who was kneading his feet and revelations were coming intermittently. The first part said, The mill shall revolve and divine decrees shall descend. This implies that as a revolving mill has some parts invisible, which then become visible after revolution, 
Then God added, This is the grace of God that has been promised. It certainly shall come. No one can dare to ward it off. In other words, the matter was decreed in heaven. Then God added, Say, I swear by my God that this indeed is the truth. Neither shall it change at all, nor shall it remain hid hidden. A matter will arise which will amaze you. This is the word of God of high heavens. My Lord does not deviate from the straight course that he practices with his exalted servants, and he does not forget those of his servants who are deserving of help. So you will have a clear victory in this case, but this verdict is delayed until such time as has been ordained by God. You are with me, and I am with you. Say, all matters are in the control of my God. Then leave the opponent in his error, pride and arrogance. End of quote. This last sentence was to provide solace to the promised Messiah al-Islam, despite such odds against him. Then God added, and I quote, The All-Powerful is with you, and he knows all that is hidden. Indeed, even matters that are utmost secret and beyond the comprehension of man are known to him. Then he said, This God alone is truly worthy of worship. There is none else worthy of worship. Man should not re rely upon anyone else as if he worshipped him. It is only God who has this qualification. He is the only one who knows everything and who sees everything. And that God is with those who adopt righteousness and fear him. And when they do good superficially or in a flawed manner, instead they attend to its most subtle elements and perform it with perfection. Such are the ones whom God helps because they are in the service of his favoured paths. They tread them and help others to tread them. Then he said, We sent Ahmad to his people, but his people turned away from him and said, He is a great liar, submerged in worldly greed. They testified against him in courts to get him arrested, and they are falling upon him with their attacks like a strong flood that rushes down from high. But he says, My beloved is very near to me. He is near indeed, but is concealed from the eyes of the opponents. End of quote. This whole prophecy was made when opponents were confident the case would be dismissed. The promised Messiah al-Islam wrote that God had informed he would bring to light a fact whereby the conquered would become the conqueror and the conqueror would be conquered. No one had any idea how this would come about. The day of judgment arrived with the opponents totally confident. On that very day, by chance, lawyer Khwaja Kamaluddin chanced to look at the index of an old file 
with summary of essential orders. A certified copy of the order disclosed that the land was not in the exclusive ownership of Imam Uddin, but included Ghulam Murtaza, the Promised Messiah's father. This information was shown to the presiding judge, and he immediately issued a decree against Imam Uddin with costs. The prophecy promised not only a victory, but also disclosure of a concealed matter, which is what the judgment did entirely. Now I move on to sign number 121. During the time of the 4th of April, 1905 earthquake, God informed the Promised Messiah that there would be more earthquakes. So, as a precaution, the Promised Messiah and family moved their living quarters to the garden in Marquise. At that time, the Promised Messiah wife became seriously ill with fever and cough. No treatment worked and she became immobile, needing to be carried everywhere. The Promised Messiah prayed fervently and received the revelation, My Lord God is with me. He shall presently inform me what the disease is and about its treatment. Minutes later, it was put into the Promised Messiah's heart that this was inflammation of the liver, for which there is a prescription in a book which would be helpful for it. That prescription was prepared and administered. The Promised Messiah saw a dream that Abdul Rahman came and informed that fever had gone and another revelation followed, and I quote, Since you came to my mansion, time after time, then did God send down the rain of mercy or not? Many people witnessed the fulfillment of this prophecy. Now I move on to sign number 100. And 20, 123. Once a Hindu gentleman, Swami Shugan Chandar, came to see the Promised Messiah at Qadian about contributing to a conference of great religions. At first, the Promised Messiah was hesitant as he only did things upon God's approval. He therefore prayed for God to reveal the discourse to him which would be triumphant over others. After this, he felt a stirring heavenly power and started writing. Witnesses could confirm that he wrote extempore without any preliminary draft and at great speed. He got a revelation. I quote, The paper has been declared supreme. When the paper was read out at the conference, the audience was ecstatic and it was allowed an extra day to complete it since it dealt with all requested questions. The president of the conference exclaimed that this paper has been declared supreme over all others. The English Civil and Military Gazette said the paper transcended all others. 
likewise about 20 urdu newspapers said the same everyone felt the paper had triumphed the testimony of all sects and the english journal show that the prophecy was totally fulfilled attracting widespread praise that triumphant paper is now known as the philosophy of the teachings of islam in english translation now i move on to sign number 124 Whilst the promised Messiah Islam was writing Brahina Ahmadiyya, people were not inclined towards him, nor was he well known. He needed a lot of funds for which he prayed to God and received a revelation in Urdu, Arabic and English. Revelations seem to say that money will most certainly come after 10 days but nothing before that the help of god is near just like when the female camel raises her tail to deliver which is imminent just like allah's help one revelation when the amount is received then you will go to Amritsar, was in English. This prophecy was disclosed to three Arya Hindus who were to told to expect money to come by mail. Other Muslims were also apprised of this prophecy. Since nothing was expected for 10 days, so on the 11th day, money was expected, after which the promised Messiah Islam would go to Amritsar. The Hindus were going to the post office daily, hoping to prove the prophecy wrong. On the 11th day, they returned, looking glum, and informed of 110 rupees sent by Muhammad Afzal Khan, and 20 rupees from another. The 130 rupees was sufficient for that moment. On the same day, a summons from the summary court, Amritsar, was delivered to appear as a witness. It was possible for all this information to be confirmed from records including the promised Messiah al-Islam's deposition in the court. This sign was manifested in 1884. The three Hindu witnesses repeatedly failed to confirm the truth of the prophecy, which could not have been forged, as the promised Messiah al-Islam did not know a word of English. The Promised Messiah Islam said that this was a great sign not only for those whose eyes are not blinded by prejudice. Now I move on to sign number 127. A person, Pandit Sehaj Ram, was a reader in the court of the commissioner at Amritsar, having previously been reader to the deputy commissioner at Sialkot. He often discussed religion with the promised Messiah al-Islam. At that time, the promised Messiah al-Islam's elder brother had successfully sat competitive examinations for the post of Thessildar and was awaiting assignment to a post. One day, the promised Messiah was reading the Holy Quran and experienced a vision. He saw Sehaj Ram 
in black asking for intercession to be shown mercy. Allah made him understand that Sahaj Ram had expired at that very moment. Then the Promised Messiah saw a group discussing possible posts for his brother and he suggested that should Pandit Sahaj Ram die, that post would also be suitable. It was only two or three days later that it was learned of the death of Sahaj Ram at that very hour, fulfilling the news in the vision. Sign number 128 On the 11th of February 1906 a prophecy was made about Bengal in these words. I quote, Concerning the order that had been issued with regard to Bengal, they will now be consoled. The government had issued an order regarding the division of the Bengal state. This frustrated the Bengalis, who tried to stop it, but failed. Government did not like the resultant agitation. The Bengalis considered the angel of death to be Lieutenant Governor Fuller. The Bengalis were suffering at the hands of officials. Then the Promised Messiah received the revelation and I quote, concerning the order that has been issued with regard to Bengal, they will now be consoled. The Promised Messiah published this prophecy which was fulfilled. The Lieutenant Governor Fuller unexpectedly resigned causing jubilation in Bengal and making them feel consoled. The reason for resignation was never revealed. The Civil and Military Gazette wrote, the likelihood is that his successor, the new Lieutenant Governor, will follow a quite conciliatory policy. These words show that the resignation was designed to console the Bengalis. It was made clear that the new appointment would be on the basis of a mandate of a conciliatory nature. The prophecy was thereby completely fulfilled. I now move on to sign number 130. The Promised Messiah in his book Anjame Atham invited many opposition Malvis by name to a Mubahila challenge and that any one of them could enter that Mubahila. The Promised Messiah prayed that some of them should become blind, some may be paralyzed, some may become insane. Some may die of snake bite. Some may meet an untimely death. Some may be disgraced. And some may suffer financial losses. Most of those named Molvis did not have the courage to enter the challenge as stipulated. However, they continued to slander the promised Messiah Islam and persisted in their denial. Rashid Ahmad of Gangoa did invoke the curse of Allah beyond the liar, but also called the Promised Messiah Islam a Satan. The result was that of the 52 Malvis, only 20 remained alive at the time of writing and even they were trapped in some kind of calamity or another. The rest 
had all died. Molvi Rashid Ahmed became blind and died of snake bite. Molvi Ghulam Dastagir became a victim of Mubhaila begun by himself. Molvi Shadin became insane and then died. Of those remaining alive, none of them escaped the named calamities prayed for even though they had not entered the Mubhaila as such. This was all a great sign in itself. Moving on to sign number 131. In some earlier signs it was noted that one Arya, Bishambar Das, brother of Sharambhat, would not be acquitted of his criminal charge, but his prison sentence would be reduced by half. When eventually he was released, after serving his sentence, his relatives were announcing that he had been acquitted. It was so announced in one mosque and he was being con con congratulated in the marketplace. The Promised Messiah was shocked and feared that the Hindus would say, you wrongly prophesied he would not be acquitted. The Promised Messiah was much aggrieved at this when in one state of prostration God addressed him loudly as Have no fear at all. You indeed are victorious. The Promised Messiah waited to see how that prophecy would be fulfilled. All along his brother Sharampath kept confirming that he had been acquitted. About six months passed and mischievous people would f mock and jeer, although Sharampath did not go that far himself. Then one Tasildar of Batala once came to Qadian at 8 a.m. one morning. He came to visit the Promised Messiah Islam's residence where some Hindus were assembled outside. He was still on his horse and on seeing Bishambar Das in the group, he addressed him saying, Bishambar Das, I was pleased to hear of your release from jail, but alas, you were not acquitted. The Promised Messiah Islam, on questioning Sharampath about this, he confirmed that he had indeed lied since to enter into a new marital relationship it was important not to have a wrongdoing against him. This event confirmed both the original prophecy and the new confirming revelation as clear signs I now move on to sign 133. The Promised Messiah did not know the English language at all. But nevertheless, God spoke to him several times in English, which were recorded in Brahin Ahmadiyya 25 years before the book. The following are the English revelations put together. I quote, I love you. I am with you. Yes, I am happy. Life of pain. I shall help you. I can what I will do. We can what we will do. God is coming with his army. He is with you to kill enemy. The days shall come when God shall help you. Glory be this Lord God, maker 
of earth and heavens. Now, taken together, these revelations are a prophecy that God spoke in English, saying in effect the following, I shall efface your present condition of pain and suffering, and I shall help you, and I shall come to you with an army and destroy the enemy. The Promised Messiah recorded that most of this prophecy has been fulfilled. God opened up every bounty for him, and thousands had entered the bath pledge with him. The prophecy being in English was a sign too, foretelling the future. At this point, I shall end lecture 9 now with this sign 133 and shall try to present some more signs in lectures 10 and 11 with other matters from the book. Inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.